Hello, my name is Ian Farrier and I'm a volunteer at West Newcastle Picture History Collection, an archive of historic photographs based at the West End Library in Benwell. My talk today is entitled A Survivor's Tale, a selection of some of the oldest surviving buildings in West Newcastle. This is my personal selection. There are many other examples. WNPHC believe that copyright to the following images either belongs to us or we have permission to use the image. We also operate a notice and takedown policy. Uh, image one, please. Structure number one, the temple of Antenositicus, Benwell, second century AD. Situated in the civilian settlement outside of the Roman wall fort of Condicum, in today's Broomridge Avenue, is a Roman temple dedicated to a deity called Antenositicus. Built about 180 AD and uncovered in the 1930s, this temple measures just under five meters long by three meters wide and contains three reproduction altars dedicated by soldiers from Condicum to a god whose name is not found anywhere else in the Roman Empire. Antenositicus, therefore, is a local Celtic god. The Great North Museum contains the three original altars, plus a stone head of Anten Antenositicus, which was found nearby in 1862. Our image dates from 1936, with newly built houses in the background. Next image, please. Structure number two, St. Michael and All Angels Church, Newburn, Medieval. Situated overlooking the village of Newburn, which is at the most easterly fordable point on the River Tyne, this stone church was built over a 30 year period beginning in 1070 AD. It is situated on the site of an earlier wooden church which burned down in 1067 AD. Stone from Hadrian's Wall was used in the construction of the church with a tower dating from 1100 AD. The current building is the result of centuries of additions and alterations to the simple Norman design. The chancel is largely 13th century and the transepts 14th and 15th centuries. Significant restoration work was carried out in the 1870s and also following a serious fire between 2006 and 2009. It has been listed as Grade 1 by English Heritage and this image dates from about 1930. Next image please. Structure number three, East Denton Hall, Denton Burn, early 1600s. Situated adjacent to the roundabout where the, rest, the West Road crosses the A1 Western Bypass East Denton Hall dates from 1622. This date is carved in the original stone entrance doorway and was built for the coal owning Errington family. It is one of the few surviving examples of Jacobean architecture in the region and retains many original features. In the later 1700s, it was the summer home of Edward and Elizabeth Montague, who also had extensive coal interests in the area. Elizabeth became famous for her correspondence with numerous literary and artistic figures of her time and visitors to the hall included Dr Samuel Johnston, Dr Joshua Reynolds and David Garrick. After the Montagues, ownership passed to the Rokeby family and since 1942 the hall has been the official residence of the Roman Catholic Bishop of Hexham and Newcastle and is known as Bishop's House. The property is grade one listed and this image dates from 1976. Next image please. Structure number four, Wellburn House, Benmore, mid 1700s. Situated in the driveway leading from Benwell Lane to Benwell Tower, Wellburn House is a residential property dating from the mid 1700s. It is brick built in a distinctive English garden wall bond style. 
almost nothing is known of its story. It appears on the first Ordnance Survey map of 1864, but it is not named, and neither is it recorded in the Royal Engineers' working notes. This would suggest it was part of the Benwell Tower estate. It is Grade 2 listed, and this image is a very recent one. Next image, please. Structure number five, Thorntree Farmhouse, Denton Burn, late 1700s. Situated between the Denton Road roundabout and Slateyford Lane, Thorntree Farmhouse is a consequence of the agricultural enclosure movement of the 18th century. The familiar English field system of today was created in the 1700s when progressive landowners switched from open field farming to distinct enclosed field farming. These new fields were then grouped together to form new farm units and dedicated farmhouses and outbuildings were then built at their centre for more efficient agricultural management. Thorntree farmhouse dates from the late 18th century and the farm itself was 65 acres in size and its fields lay south of the present day West Road. All the fields had names and Thorntree was an active farm until the 1920s. The farmhouse is built on the line of Hadrian's Wall and currently serves as an Indian restaurant. Our image dates from 1916. Next image, please. Structure number six, Leamington Glassworks, Leamington, late 1700s. Leamington Glassworks were created by the Northumberland Glass Company and opened in 1787. Leamington was chosen as it was close to a ready supply of coal and the proximity of the Tyne allowed an easy supply of raw materials. Our image dates from 1915 and shows several of the glass house cones where the glass was produced. Only one glass cone has survived, having been built in 1797, and is said to be made of more than one million bricks. Production ended in 1997. Next image, please. Structure number seven, Ashfield House, Elzig, 1830s. Situated on Elzig Road, this stone-built property is thought to have been constructed in the 1830s for a branch of the Richardson family of the nearby Leatherworks fame. However, it does not appear on the 1841 Tithe Survey map although it is shown on the 1864 Ordnance Survey map. It has been a nursery for young children since at least the 1930s. It is grade two listed and our image dates from 1996. Next image, please. Structure number eight, Ooston, Palmontley and Shafto Streets, Scotswood, early 1900s. Situated between Whitfield Road and Armstrong Road are three, three rows of Edwardian terraced housing, Houston Street, Palmontley Street and Shafto Street. None appear on the 1899 Ordnance Survey map, but all do on the 1914 map. They were built in a field called Bull Meadow. Pretoria Street and Robert Street were built to the east at the same time, both names are connected to the South African War of 1899 to 1902, but they were demolished in the early 2000s. Whilst much of the interwar council housing around them has been demolished, these streets soldier on. Our images of Robert Street and can it be dated more accurately than Edwardian. West Newcastle Picture History Archive, <laughs> West Newcastle Picture History Collection holds an archive of over 20,000 images of the entire west side of Newcastle. We have a website at WNPHC WordPress containing 1,000 images and are developing a new searchable website, Newcastle Photo Archive, to be launched later this year. That's it.